everybody, and welcome to Nerd Explaining Podcast. I'm your host, Eric Silva. With me, as always, is my co-host, Jose Romero. What it is, what it was. Happy New Year's, belated, otherwise, to all Happy the nerds out there. New Year, 2023. Welcome to 20, huh? 2023. 2023. Brand new year, clean slate. First show of um, the year. Yes. You know, a lot of stuff coming up, maybe. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, there's there's still there's still a bunch of 2022 here. You're still trying to like brush off. But for the most part, for the most part, clean slate. So enjoy. Welcome. Ha- I hope you had a, a great time, nerds out there and geeks as well. Uh, I hope you got to celebrate with people that you like. Or if not, I hope you got to go through a crazy like binge session of like video games or movies. You're like, this is the greatest experience ever. Glug, glug, glug. You know, man, whatever that experience was. I'm hoping it was good for you. That's the important yeah, thing. Exactly. I, I didn't want to mention, because we ended up didn't do a show last week, but you bring yes. Brazilian and all, and I figured the legendary Pele had passed away, who is godlike in your nation. It, Icon, I, one of the greatest. I actually have a funny story about this recently. Uh, I was sitting next to my dad, and my dad looked at me, and I'm, not, I'm sure every geek has had this version of this conversation come out of their father. If not... I'm from that select few where that goes, you know, I thought you'd be more physically active. <laughs> I was like, what? And he's like, like, you could have been great. I'm like, what are you talking about? And he says, when you were a baby, you were held by Pele himself. <laughs> like, I thought, I was like, do you think talent is transferable? Like a virus? Like, is is, is skill set your COVID? Like, I don't understand how that is possible. <laughs> And he's like, well, I just thought you would do more, baby, close to him. I go, Dad, you learn things by doing it. I'm sorry. Me and Helen well, Pele doesn't count. That's how great he thought Pele was. He could just, you know, do osmosis, you know, transfer some of his godlike ability, if you will. And I got none of it. None of it. <laughs> Didn't work. When I was sad, er, because maybe he had to t- touch me like twice. And it would have happened. I've been waiting this whole time hey, for the second tap. I'm never going to get it. Pele's great, but he ain't that great. <laughs> I mean, come on. Uh, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> Uh, but, uh, but that was actually, a, you know, a little, a little bit of interesting news. Uh, and not, not, well, looking not as sad as it could have been, but we talked about briefly about Jeremy Renner. And he had a little bit of an incident, at, I think it was towards the end of last year, right? Or beginning of this year? Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But towards, like, yeah, he was in, yeah. you know, critical condition, stable. He had surgery. I guess he had a snow plowing accident. Which was initially, helping a neighbor that hit by yeah. a snow plow. And, yeah. and later reported he came out and he was helping someone out, you know, and... and He's uh, living up to his Hawkeye-esque stature of being a, listen, a hero. Maybe. Listen, listen. I'm just happy to know that real-life Hawkeye is as super heroic as I am in real life. Like, we're going to help, but we're going to end up horribly injured and have to get massaged in a hospital by our sister while wearing a breathing mask. Like, it's going to... It's going to cost more than the edit we put in, but it doesn't matter because the right thing was done. A life was possibly saved, but wow yeah, yeah. You know, i could imagine going through a head and he thought it was like it was, someone hit action he's like just jumping over something uh you know slow mo it just didn't work out in his head exactly the same way and he got plowed by uh his machine i don't know exactly what happened. they haven't really said exactly what happened but he got fucked up <laughs> oh, when I hate yeah it, it really fucked up. i was like oh, uh, you know I, I i part of me really does think oh man all that avengers training is finally gonna pay off like he's like i'm gonna be and he did it with joy and like just they, it was actually was like, oh man, I'm gonna be a good guy and I'm gonna look good doing it. This is great. And then the snowplow hit him. <laughs> it's like, damn, not it's exactly. Horrible. Nah. It's horrible Ooh. and it's hilarious. Where is that stun double when you need him? Um But I get it, because I'd be right there. I would there. I'd be right there. <laughs> but like he's okay, right? So you know, nerves rest uh, rest assured. So you know, yes. th- thankfully, you know, we like I like Jimmy Renner. Um just Hawkeye wasn't his fault. The show anyway. Um. <laughs> Episode three was was great though. Episode three was so good. Oh my god! We, great. we won't blame him for any any wrongdoings done on that show. And, you know, so it's fine. Uh, but you're he's okay. You're okay. You're yeah, he was, uh, on... They're not snow plow proof, but you're yeah, bulletproof. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but he's okay. I think he had like a uh, a video on Twitter or something. I don't know. He was, yeah, he's doing better. Yeah, he's doing the better. Old, right. The only reason, the only reason I'm busting chops is because he's oh, yeah, not of an animal. Too, like I said, yeah, no, listen, yeah. yeah if he, the worst yeah, was averted that, at the end of the day, right? So. Until I saw that video, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Now I can rip. Like, uh, yeah, of course. I, yeah, there's yeah, no yeah. way. Yeah. Gotta, yeah I'm not the room, monster, and, you know, the room clear up. Okay, let's go yeah. with the jokes. Uh, what the hell? Uh, but either way, so, you know, hope he gets better soon. 
Love to see him back on the big screen, uh, Hawkeye or otherwise. I like he's he's done some good stuff. I like Jim Ritter, man. He, he's good. Um, you know, I, I I will say uh, for a number of reasons, but his Born Identity movie wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. I'm a fan, but it wasn't horrible. But whatever. It's just it, hard. It wasn't it, bad. It, it, it wasn't. It's such a Matt Damon thing. It's just it's hard to take over like that. It really is. It, 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 yeah. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And that's what I'm saying. That is something about Matt Damon on that project makes it feel better. But in terms of what that movie was compared to other Born Identities, relatively the same. It wasn't bad. It's fine. It wasn't bad. It's fine. I think he was, was in the Mission Impossible, one of the Mission Impossibles. Oh, he was good in Mission Impossible yeah. too. Yeah. But I'm just saying, all things considered, that Born Identity movie. Not bad, not great, not dude. You gotta watch it. No, but like it, it's there. You watch yeah, it, it wasn't a the train wreck. And again, I, like Hawkeye, I'm not gonna blame him. Right, like, he did what he could in that show. It is what it is. I, I, you know what, Jeremy Renner's uh, Jeremy Renner, Born Identity in the same category as uh as Solo. I actually, if you look at it as just a movie, it's not bad. Your personal opinions aside, I get it. But as a movie, it's not bad. I. I take the boy or solo. Uh, I'm gonna take the Hawkeye <laughs> show or solo. You hear that, and, that, and that's a mouthful right there. He would take Born over Solo. Yes. There you go, Nerd. Yeah. Nurse Planning fans, if you wanted to know the caliber of that movie, <laughs> take it from Jose. I hate everything that's not what I like. Romero. <laughs> I take Born over oh, Solo. All day, over every solo. Day. Just, just saying. Wow. Um, yeah, it is what it is. Shots fired <laughs> and credit given. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Speaking of giving credit, we're about to give someone credit potentially for reviving DC Universe for Warner Brothers. Maybe. And we're still waiting for the big news. I think he came out saying recently that it's going to be the end of the month. And they, I mean, they had talked before about an eight, 10 year plan, whatever it was. I think they're going to release. He talked about, he t- tweeted this out. He's been tweeting a lot, just dropping little nuggets here. Yeah. There. Um, which is kind of cool, but I think they're gonna reveal the first few years, which is what we, you and I thought, of, right? They're not gonna do the whole thing. Just give us a couple of years at a time, right? We don't need to know the next, the plan for the next 2030. We don't need all that. Just let's, let's set up and we can build from there. So well, you gotta remember they're promoting a 10 year plan, but their contract's only for four, which means they have to make bangers up front to make sure they can earn that back-end contract or all this is going to be wasted. Which is why, don't, don't announce it until we, you know it's coming. Uh-huh. <laughs> it was a couple of years, you know you're going to be in, in, in town and the head of the studio and see what happens. Uh, yeah. But he did come on, he did tweet something I thought it was interesting that he is um, officially uh, writing an unannounced DC show as well. I, and he, I think he finished writing Superman already. He talked, he talked about it. Oh, really? He, okay. He, he, he had been writing Superman for a while. So oh, now all he's right. writing a DC TV show, so that's obviously going to be part of the plan. Interesting. So we, we kind of knew who was doing. Cause then even before all this, you know, they talked about you know with Peacemaker and he was gonna do other projects for DC uh, television. And I think and I speculate. I still don't know what he will come up with. Cause now as a head of the head of the studio, I'm sure his plan has changed from what he thought he was going to do before. Maybe. Right. Um. Because even Peacemaker. I mean, it's still part of the old DCU or DCU or whatever. DCU. Whatever. Kinda. Like kind it. Of. It, it and it's most barely because they never even showed Superman or Wonder Woman. They did. They showed they Flash and Aquaman. Flash, right? Two characters who we believe are no longer going to be part of this. But <laughs> because know. of the Flashpoint movie that's coming out, maybe that's okay because as long as you get the Flash there, that's how it connects to the movie that changes yeah, the universe. Yeah, right, exactly. So there yeah. might be before everything be gets it, wiped out. Kinda, you know, kinda, or maybe potentially, but. Whatever. Way, 48%. But, yes. Yeah, it is it's very close to 50. <laughs> but, uh, so he's doing, I guess, doing a show now, which is cool. Um, I still don't know. I don't think it's Peacemaker related at this point. Yeah, what I, I, I think it is. What if he did a Suicide Squad TV series? <sighs> I, I mean, I get You'd it. get John Cena in. John Cena's the leader, team captain. And every you have like maybe one or two like the, the vigilante there as well. <clears throat> you get like one or two more established like B level DC heroes or villains, and the rest are all the F level characters, good and bad, all put on the crew. And every episode, like sixty to eighty percent of the of the of the team dies, just nonstop. Like that would be great. I, get, I, get, I mean, I don't know. It, it, not if he wasn't the head of the story, story I would say story, yes. One or four episodes, but at but the I, end, I, of that, yeah, I just don't see him like doing small characters now. Not yet until it, whatever okay. is being established okay. gets established, right? You want to we talk about this? Get Superman out there, right, or Batman, whomever. Get the big guns out, and then work 
back to the little characters. I mean, he's great with his unknown characters. We know that. But you can't start off this with unknown characters. You can't. I guess so. Yeah, you have to come guns blade. You just have I'm figuring. I'm figuring like if you had Cena right mm-hmm. in the series, or I'm still thinking like what other big name associated could you get them on that you think? Oh, like oh, uh, maybe. Uh, uh, well, I, they're heroes, but I was gonna say maybe like Adam Smasher from Hawkeye from the from Adam, from Black Adam could be in it because he had a role in that, so he would be like. Maybe he stepped on somebody by mistake, and so he has kind of put his stint there for a little bit or something. You know, I don't, I don't, I'm thinking like that, but like I think you you can get smaller people, kind of maybe. I mean, yeah, it depends what the plan. I mean, like I said, we are now we're just pff, we're gonna know soon. It's gonna be he said is this month, which we we you know we speculated that's what was being talked about. Right. So right. It's gonna well, this is the first week of January. Yeah. So, so it's, it's coming mean, soon. So far, nothing. Yeah. So I'm not sure how he's gonna announce it. I'm thinking on Twitter he's just gonna drop something. I don't know because there's no like. Right, con coming or event or something that he does, you know. I, so I don't know how he, how they're actually going to release this information, but I assume I guess through Twitter he may do like a video thing or something. I don't know. He does a lot of things through Twitter, so it makes sense. Right? Yeah, exactly. He's been tweeting all the time, so we'll see. But it's coming soon. It's coming soon. We, 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 I guess so we're going to be. That's a show. We'll drop a show that that after whenever he does like an announcement with the yes, media that absolutely. whenever that may be, we'll, we'll have to we'll wait and see. Absolutely. Um, the other big thing before we get into some other stuff here is. The Ant Man trailer is coming out Monday, the new one. So, as you know, I am not one to really watch more than one trailer, maybe two, depending on the property, depending right. on how the first trailer was, right? Because some trailers, like right. an announcement kind of teaser, they don't show a whole lot. I'll watch yeah. the following one, right? The first Ant Man trailer was a decent trailer in terms of what they showed. So, I'm on the fence here. So, I'm going to let you, Eric, <laughs> make that decision for me. Should I watch the next Ant Man trailer? Because I'll say this, I'll say this because you know the last couple of years Marvel's been relying on a lot of these cameos and stuff that they drop on trailers, right? Just to get people right. to go. And I'm right. really don't know. We went through with Doctor Strange. Yes. Uh, with, there was no surprise. <laughs> it was all just here it is. So I'm afraid in Ant Man they're gonna. I heard they may drop something to that effect. Ooh, I don't know. Okay. If I really want to see. Or what that who it is, is yes right? i mean i kind of would be surprised okay. i don't know i mean yeah all right all right all right all right should Shush. i watch it? i'm gonna Shush. let it up to you you i'll do what you want me to do on this one i know you're well, gonna watch it obviously I, I mean i'm gonna i'm gonna watch it like on repeat for like 30 minutes Fair enough. while just i get just it. drinking whiskey and high five in the air it's gonna be crazy how i do it uh, but, uh <laughs> um can I can I watch it first and then tell you if it's worth it? Because I, I, if I'm gonna recommend okay. you, I want it to be a hard recommend. I don't want to be on passive. Like, I, I'm, ah, I'm okay with I have that. nothing better to do. I'm okay with that. If you want to watch it, because it comes on Monday. There's a big big college game Monday. Drops in halftime what they normally do on ESPN, but which will be on YouTube sure. like a, ten seconds after. So it'll be Monday. Or ten night. seconds before, huh? <laughs> or ten seconds before. Or oh, whatever, right? But it's dropping <laughs> simultaneously. Oh, whatever. Either way, Monday is the the ninth. It's dropping. Give it a gander. I'll expect the text. Uh, circa Absolutely. 9 30, 10 o'clock, depending. And I'll see if I watch it. Like I said, I, right now, I'm a no, but again, this is not up to me. You say you should watch it, I'll watch it and we'll talk about it. If not. Because I wanted you to watch other trailers before and you said no. And I was like, dude, those were totally worth it. I can't recommend off of a blind assumption. No, no, because that, that, then you're gonna be like, "This is why I don't watch second that, trailers." That is absolutely fair. I want fair. to be like, so, I want you to be like, "Ooh, what else is out I, there?" I will say this. Con- I want to taste more. <laughs> consider the fact if it's too spoilery or not. That's one thing I will. I'll say to you is like, if it's again, if they reveal, I miss, I'm just throwing his name out there. What, Wolverine comes out, whatever. I'm just, just, I don't know if I want to know that. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I'm sure I'll probably oh. hear it because that would probably leak everywhere anyway. Sure. Unfortunately, which is I hope they don't show that kind of cameo, or whatever in I mean, in the movie in the trailer. But so here's I'll, I'll tell you this: I honestly don't know who you would put there that would make you more excited to see the movie if you weren't already. Like, think about it: you're getting Paul Rudd, you're getting Michael Douglas, eh. you're getting Michelle Pfeiffer, eh. you're getting Jonathan Majors. Eh. I mean. That whole thing sounds great. Like I want to, I want to, I want to. I, mean, yeah, well, even I'm, if this I'm, wasn't a superhero movie, I'm I'd at, see I, it I, I unless it was like a real serious I mean, drama. The, like, the same uh, thing with yeah. Doctor Strange, right? Why would they show Xavier, right? What was the point of that when you already had, you know, 
that Doctor Strange and Wong oh, and all well, the, the, the okay, cast of well, Cap, I, right? I, 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 can, I can bring context to that counter argument because if you're show Doctor Strange, you're implying one of two things: the X Men or the Illuminati. He does not come singular; he comes as a package deal. It's like, uh, you know, yeah, sure. Would you just have a McDonald's Coke if you couldn't get fries and a and, and a burger? For a lower, like, oh, this little combination is packing deal. To be honest, with it's you. great. So I don't, oh, don't you ever just work McDonald's name? I'm not even sponsored by them, and I hate what they do to my body. I love. It. I, will I mean, try I guess, one, uh, eat, but I don't. But they so do good. it, and they resist it with, with Spider-Man to some degree, right? Uh, they just right. they just let some of the villains loose, and that's it. Fine, but I don't know, man. It's like. What, they're trying to get the, the, the audience, the casual. This is for the casual audience. The nerds are gonna go no matter what. You know, who can not to see a trade? They can give three fucks, right? We're gonna go watch it. That's fine. But again, very it's sm- very pretty, right? But a very small percentage of the movie going audience are us, right? Most of them are just casual yes. fans. They don't give a shit. So you draw them in by what? Oh look, whatever. You know, uh, Reed Richards. I don't know, or what, or whatever you want to throw in there. Because I mean, the, the, uh, Peyton Reed directed it. Said this is supposed to be an Avengers level kind of movie, right? It's not your typical okay. Man, man. So that being said, oh, I mean, Kang is an Avengers level event villain. Like, so you're already just no putting him in the movie. Like, the you're making like, it an Avengers level for us, yeah. But again, talking about the casual audience, they don't know who fucking Kang is because Loki wasn't very, very watching. And those numbers came out, and one of the highest rated shows they had was actually She Hulk, which is near the bottom of the list, but it was still there, even more than Moon Knight. So nobody watches these shows. The casual fans don't watch the Disney Plus that much. Um, they're watching it's funny because uh they came out the numbers and like the simpsons is number one um someone like in encanto of course uh some all like toy story stuff like established old property was being watched more than anything else and towards the bottom of the list was uh, like, you know moon knight and not even andor which doesn't shock me um, she hulk she hulk i think that was it uh not not the marvel not this marvel so yeah so everything else is but that being said so no one knows who kang is we've seen kang already but no one knows who right. he is nobody cares and ant is not exactly the biggest draw right, right. he was never the biggest right like, right it's one of the lowest performing ones the ant man movies are the lowest right exactly all the marvel so movies. that being said right. i mean all this they're gonna say okay we gotta bring out something and look guys we have x or this or whatever i don't know like i said i don't know if i want to see it i i don't know if i Want to get spoiled like that, and that's again if it's what Peyton Reed says is true. This is an Avengers movie. They all say shit like that. I don't I believe it or not. Take it with a grain of salt. You know, he says Avengers because there's you know maybe all Ant Man, Wasp, uh, you know Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer's character, and that's a, a team up. Fine, I guess. Um, but what I mean, like I said, let me know. My hands, my fate's in your hands. In the situation, I will watch it. If you say, watch. If you say don't. I will absolutely let you know. You know, I. Like I said, if there's a cameo, it's I. I'm not going to contribute to you. You got to watch it because of because I know it, it's got to be a good cameo. Well, though. fair enough. That's, that, that's true. They're going to show. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to show. Whatever. I don't know. Miss, Miss Marvel, I guess, that wouldn't impress me or whatever. Or I don't know. Like okay. Uh, honestly, if they showed you, if they showed you like a Doctor Doom, uh. Or they showed you a Deadpool because it's the it's it's the quantum realm. It's got to be some. You have to be either completely insane or incredibly uber powerful to be able to get to that world. Level. Right, right. That's just the way it is. So <laughs> if it's like if it's like Doctor Doom, there's a rumor that the Beyonder is going to be in Secret War, so maybe they make an allusion to the Beyonders. Like all that's that. Not a major, would be I don't like, think it's like a major cameo. Like that's going to draw like the casual fan. I don't think anyway. Like, like Wolverine would be right. I would, I would say that. Yeah, but Wolverine has nothing to do with the quantum. Well, I know, but I'm just saying, no I'm just saying an example, right? Of someone who's known, right? Who they're going to... Audience are like, oh, shit. I know that, right? I know him or whatever. Because the casual fan is not going to know a lot of these deep characters. They're not. It's fine. So if they, they, they should... Question. Mm-hmm. Would Doctor Strange or Clea count as a worthy Jose Watch reference? I'm okay with that because that wouldn't be like shocking to see him in there. Because they're, right. they're, they're known That's characters, what I'm right? Like if someone shows up, all right, cool. But if it's if it's like again a Wolverine esque where we've seen nothing of this particular character and with right. room and then there he is, I'd rather not see that. But like Doctor Strange, and I'm okay with that. Honestly, so like, okay. So if it's Howard the Duck, you'll hear zilch from me. <laughs> like, haha, not. Gonna, and it's the 1984 Lucas. Oh, <laughs> <interesting>. <laughs> yeah, 
<laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> it is the, if he gets stuck in a cotton worm up, then we get released. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> he would make the most insane sense and be a hard attack, I think. That would be awesome. <laughs> Oh my god. But either way, so looking forward to that in a couple of days. So that's interesting. We'll, we'll talk about that next week, of course. Um, real quick, just to kind of put a cap on 2022, right? Because there was a lot of some shows that came out which were genre related, geek, you know, uh, genre. And we never really got a chance to kind of go over them. So we'll kind of go through some of these real quick. We didn't even talk really about Doom Patrol. And it, it just finished six, a six episode run. Yes, part it did. One, my part two is dropping right. later this year. Um, uh, you know, big surprise. Great. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, just shocker. Right? I mean, uh, guys, when we first talked about Doom Patrol on this on this show, I mentioned one of my favorite characters were the Scissor Men of Scissor. And to see them in season four, right. I was like, Yes, <laughs> this is right. I felt as happy about this as I did watching Moon Knight. Just wow. seeing them on the screen, I was like, oh, man, okay. wow. this is a man cutting people out of reality. Fucking dope. Like, it was great. It was great. Yeah, I mean, it's just the show's so good. It's just it's so kooky and just great. I mean, oh my God, yeah. And I, I forgot I was doing, they're doing a part one of our part two. And I was like, oh, that's oh, exactly oh, what Titans what did, too. They did a part one of yeah, two. Yeah, I heard of the part one, too, so whatever. I, but, I, I'm, I'm, I don't know who led the way, but I hope Doom Patrol didn't follow. <laughs> I hope they did it first, and Tico's like, yeah, we're going to do that, too. Uh, yeah, like, you, I know, hope that you don't want to do anything that Titans does. <laughs> no, <laughs> don't do anything Titans does. That's I, and by the way, I, I, I watched the last episode of Titans, and I go, <laughs> how bad did it get? Oof. <laughs> like we said, if he hasn't, I, I, I know, I know, I was off the show. I gave it the three, and then I'm, I'm out. I can't. I just can't do anymore. I just... I, I'm not even gonna watch the first episode when they come back, no. but I am gonna watch the last episode just because of what the episode I saw. I want to see where they get you know to. What? Maybe, maybe that's, a, that's an interesting point. Maybe I will watch the last one. You know, I just. Did. Oh yeah, you coming in cold? Oh cold. man, and it's yeah, gonna be a different perspective. It's like, let me see how they, how, they let me see how keep... bad this guy, right? I hope they keep like a quarter of what I saw. Wow. I hope they keep it because you're gonna be blown away. Okay. Wow. <laughs> All right. Uh, so I actually, I will do. That. I'll wait for the sixth one, and if it's so, somehow it blows me away, whatever. Okay, maybe I'll go back and watch. Maybe, maybe. I don't know. Uh, you know what? I hey. I I will recommend the trailer if it's a, if it's worth it, and not if it's not. But I dare you. I dare you to watch the last episode of Titans and tell me you walked away with a good feeling about yourself. Like your soul wasn't damaged. I, I, can't, I, I, can't, I can you. never guarantee such things when it comes to Titans. Dude. It, it's it's highly unlikely, I would say that. But I will tell you, I'll be, I'll be straight up. If it somehow it blows me over, oh man, it's, it's I'll gladly tell you, dude, you got to watch it. Oh man, I hope so. I, mean, I, I, I you know, uh, I'd love... I'd love to hear those words come out of your mouth because I'm going to be like, they got him too. I mean, he got him. <laughs> I don't know. Like, some magic spell. But like I guess that I do not anticipate that in the least. So I'm not worried about that. I'm gonna, I am may, I may even get even finished. I'll try. I'll attempt to watch it and see how far I get to. Uh, I'll put the over under 27 minutes and see how that, see how that goes. Uh, the other show, which this, this is one where... Uh, we talked, speaking of getting off the train here, and that was a bad match where I was like, uh, I don't think we, we weren't glowing about the show, right? And I was really worried about what they're going to do. I was going to have, have a short leash, a Titans-esque leash. The only Fair. two, so I still got one more to watch. What do you think so far? I'm just going to get your thoughts on this one. Um, I felt like they listened to fans about, this show's too slow. They're like, so let's make it go fast. Let's start fast and just keep going. We're not going to stop, which is fine. So now they're going around and doing a lot of stuff, but everyone's still really concerned about the mythology you started to establish at the end about Omega mm -hmm. and to kind of avoid the mythology aspect and just put them on a, on a big, fast adventure. Feels like you only learned half the lesson. Like, the whole point of your of your of your season one, if your season one's gonna be slow, it's because you're setting up a lot of stuff to immediately start paying off in at least the first beginning of two of season two to keep you invested. And then you can kind of break off to like adventure of the week and then reconcile back into mythology. Because there's so far there's no mythology, I feel I'm only getting half the show I would have preferred to see. Agreed. Uh it's 
I didn't hate it. I'm not gonna look forward to see that. I thought it was fine. It was fast paced. Whatever. I don't. I don't mind pace as long as it gives me something interesting. We talked about that, right? Andor is not a fast paced show, but it's just great. So I don't need all that. Um, yeah, it's just okay. I, I don't want to adventure the week kind of show. If this was just gonna be. I'm, I might be out sooner or later, right? I, I'm hoping next couple when I, I think I'm not dropping one or two of you. I think it's just one every week. I don't know. But okay, I would like to get some story now. <laughs> I, I don't know. Yeah. If we don't, I have to pull the plug. I, I, you know, I don't know. It, it'll, be, it'll be disappointing that this is what Disney animation could start to be because I feel like they're learning the wrong lessons. Yeah. Like, like uh, Clone Wars, the ending of Clone Wars that you did was great. Even though you had a weird two episodes in the middle about the, mm -hmm. the mechanic girls in the middle of... Uh, yeah. uh, uh, yeah, Alderaan or not Alderaan, but uh, the the Central City. Um, it was okay, but it still felt like it was contributing something to what what a uh, Ahsoka Tana was growing out of or into. No, this just feels very sort of like mid season, early three seasons of Clone Wars. It feels very just adventure, and if you already know, like like Order sixty six just happened, you guys are on the run. And you have Omega, which is the first female clone, and possibly hints to other things in her, to avoid anything that, while starting to do this, you found out this about her, or leading to a bigger conspiracy going on with the clones in general. I feel like you're missing a huge opportunity to reward people who invested themselves from season one no, I, to just a very big, fast adventure, which is fine, yeah. but... You know, like I want this more point, me personally, just yeah. At this point, I Star Wars has got to be a little bit right, more than exactly, just fine to me, exactly. Because I've been getting fine to it. Eh. No, yeah, and, so, and the case are great, but those are few and far yeah, between. Exactly. So I mean, like I guess I'm still on. Let's see what the third. I'm, I'm hoping if it continues like this, I I, I may be out. Like I said, sooner or later. But let's see. Well, I'm gonna. It did enough to where let's see where it goes. I guess. Like I said, it wasn't, and, it wasn't and, awful. And, just whatever. And not the, and not to sound like like oh like oh you just a. Uh, a Star Wars hater, like Andor came out and had me on episode one. Course, I was like, yeah. wow, yeah, this is great. Yeah, it's a great story. So uh, it, it's just one of the things where like, when it's really good, it's really good. And that's great. But if it's just okay, I'm not going to be like, oh, this is all cool. Because like, it's it's good, but I got to get something. It doesn't have to be bombastic, but it's got to be, it's got to give me something that in earnest. And it's got to be honest, even if it's kid honest. Right, no, ex ex that's why. I agree. Yeah, absolutely. So that's why Clone Wars worked. It's kid honest, but it's honest. Right. Same thing with this. I hope, yeah, let's see where it goes. I, I guess it is one we were. I think, and I forgot it was coming out. I was like, oh, that's right, bad batch. I forgot. Um, another one that we never talked about. I guess this counts as drama TV. Uh, Wednesday. I know you had mentioned that. Yeah. That came out. Tim Burton. Where it's funny because I saw that I saw the first episode in in the theater that had a screening for it like a month before. Okay. Um, and I was like, ugh. All right, I'll go. It's Tim Burton, dude. Yeah, Tim Burton sucks. Let's be honest. He's, he's been sucking for a while. I like Tim Burton. I did early on. I like Tim When Burton. it first came out, but he's just been sucking the last 10 years. He's just made more than that, to be honest with you. I'm like, okay, fine. And, and I wasn't a huge Adam's Family guy. Whatever, right? Not me. Whatever. Right, but I like the first fine. episode. You know, I recommend it. It's like, I, this is cool. I like where it was going. All the series came out, and I really liked the show. And obviously, I people did because this became a huge show for netflix i think one of the yeah. best shows who would have thought like the right. fact that it's as big as it got that i was like really yeah I mean, all of you okay fair enough i mean i guess it's more popular than i thought it was i know girls love wednesday so obviously but i sure. just get renewed for season two no 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 shocker there um but yeah i really enjoyed the show actually chewy had it in his top five of the year i wouldn't go that far but I wouldn't go that far. But I have the opposite. Own, but, but it was I was I enjoyed it. It's fun. It's, I enjoyed the show. I liked what they went with it. It's funny. I loved uh, or Jenny Ortega as Wednesday. She, said she was great, did a great job. She, she was great. She, she was, was great. great. Yeah, she was she really was great. great. So yeah, I I'm enjoying it. I guess it's not the greatest thing to slice bread. I don't know if it deserves to be the best show on Netflix or most popular show. Look, but I let's just you know. be honest about the show as a whole. Uh I think aesthetically it's it's fun. It's an aesthetically fun show. The visually, especially for a colorblind guy, the fact that I got everything, I was like, cool, awesome. I like all this. Um, uh, uh, the girl who plays Wednesday, Ortega, just like, she killed it. Mwah, yeah, perfect. She killed it. Yeah. The fact that they got Christina Ricci in yeah. there, which Christina Ricci has been one of my all time hall passes in every relationship I've ever <laughs> been into. 
I'm like, you don't understand. I'm going to ask her to dress up as Wednesday. Like, it's going to be a whole thing. I was at a certain age where she was, it was just, oh, my God, she was perfect. A beautiful woman. Um, Sam Hayek, not Sam Hayek. Uh, uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones? No. Catherine Zeta-Jones okay. as Morticia. Great. Just fantastic. I She was, I didn't know I wanted her in this role. That's how good she is in that role. I was like, I like this. Um, the kid who plays her brother Pugsley, um, I relate to the kid because he looks like me. So I'm sorry, buddy. <laughs> Life's going to be hard. Just saying. Um, I love the fact that they redesigned uh, 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 it or uh, a thing, 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 thing yeah. and, and to be all stitched up and all these kind of things. It shows that it has character. It's been through adventures. It loves this family in spite of it constantly murdering itself. Like, all that was great. What? Oh, and uh, the guy who played Gomez Adams. Oh yeah, yeah. He, I forgot his name, but I, he's yeah. He's been on for a long time. I listen, listen. Am I happy that he finally got a role that allows him to kiss Catherine Zeta Jones while she looks lovely in his eyes, buddy? Congratulations, you found the genie. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'm so happy for you. But that being said. Does he look like a gargoyle who found the genie and wished to be a real boy? And this is the best the genie could do? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sorry. It is hurtful for me to say this to you. But congratulations for finding that genie. Once again, very impressive. <laughs> um, my problem with the show is that visually, it's great. I felt like they knew where the line of campy was. And never decided how far they wanted to go. Sometimes they're like, I'm like on the line. And sometimes they're way down. And sometimes in the middle, I was like, what are we, what's the level here? Who are we pretending to be now? There, there, it, there was an inconsistency of tone that always affected the narrative for me. I still saw the comedy in it. I liked the, the, the way the story, but something about, and also, they committed, they committed these constant media sins that took me out of the show. Like, how many times does it rain in that damn town? <laughs> Raining, pouring. And they start to run, and the next scene, they're running out of the town, and they're bone dry. Go screw yourself. <laughs> if you want me to make pretend, make pretend better. That's simple. It's not a CGI monster. It's texture. Yeah, short like it stuff like that made me and they're all over the place to the point that I was like punching the pillow, like, what are you doing with my make believe? It drove me insane. So did I like the show? Yes. Is it the best show on production value alone? No. Like, say what you're like, oh, it's got more views than strange things. At least stranger things never broke the illusion of me suspending disbelief watching the demigorgon try to eat them. I was in it to win it from top to bottom, but Wednesday constantly with the tone fluctuating and inconsistency in production or just common sense of the storytelling, like it drove me up the wall. Maybe, maybe I'm, this, I'm on the spectrum. I, according to some of my exes, I might be. What I'm saying is when something hits me, it hits me hard and I could not enjoy Wednesday as much as everybody else because of that. So because of that, I don't think it's that great of a show. Fair enough. I get it. Um, uh... But I think it's one where the have people give it a shot. You know, uh, a lot of people, a lot of people love this show. I, I liked it. I didn't love it, but I liked it. You know, it's good. I enjoyed it. But you know, for what it was, um, which is not what I could say for The Witcher, Blood Origin, which is the other show that came out. Four episodes, prequel, twelve hundred years prequel. back from the you know the stories of what we know. Gerald and all that good stuff of the current Witcher. Fun Netflix. framing device by getting the bar. Yeah, to, yeah, which was the cool. Beginning the end you of know, it. I like yeah, that. fun framing device. But pff, yeah, I did not. <laughs> this was so unnecessary and pointless. I, I just, I could not get into it as, as much. I finished it because only four episodes. That's the only reason why. If right. this was eight or nine, I probably would have jumped out. To be honest with you, it was pointless. It just gave us more questions and answers. And was if we can do something origin, give us an origin, right? It just, and it didn't, but now you need to do an origin of the origin. Right. And it just, ah, it, it, it just didn't, it, it didn't feel like a, like a Witcher show, you know? Like, uh, we talked about Game of Thrones. When that came out, it felt like Game of Thrones. Right. This just felt like, this does not feel, had the same feel of the Witcher as we know it. So, 
Yeah, I was let down by this. And, and I heard and I when I read the, the reviews afterwards is getting killed, which I understand. <laughs> did you uh, did you like this one? So let's talk about production value again. <laughs> <laughs> There's a thing going on here. It's a, it's a it's a thing where like you're right when The Witcher, even though they're on a budget, they made their world feel more like a world. Mm-hmm. The whole time I was watching this, I was like, this feels like a set that they did the best they could. Yeah. And that kind of stuff constantly took me out of the show once again. Like, like either be really good in a limited space or don't do it. That's why we do like they either like we only can do it in these three things. Let's tell a story that makes sense in these three things to make this budget work or don't do it because then people are going to be like, what, the, what am I watching? What's what do you like? You have there's talented people there. There's talented people there. Michelle Yeoh is in it for Christ's sake. She's always great. That's what I'm saying. She's wasting this in this in the show though. Wasted. She's totally wasted. And you, you can tell there's certain parts of this where she's in it where she's like, just remember you did everything all t- everywhere all at once, and that's the important thing. Like she she's re- just repeating that so, to her. She's like this was this, this, was, this, was, this, this was a favorite show. This was a, this was a favorite show. This, this, a, this is, is a paycheck she got. Yeah, she got to eat. I get it. Not blaming her. It's no, not her fault. But, but, but fault. she was totally wasting the show. Yes, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. But uh, um, and and then to to do all that to claim it as a prequel to Witcher, and we didn't even get like a real Witcher. We got this Betamax version yeah, of what a Witcher what this come was. from, and I was just like, I would have liked to see like the first Witcher and then die, and then that's how you establish the witch. Instead of like, okay, so off of this monster, we're going to make the drugs to make a better version of this monster. Right. It's, 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 it's odd. It's like, well, what's the... <sighs> okay, whatever. The only thing that was cool, as far as the mythos of, of the witchers, you know, how they... Uh, talk the about, convergence the of the right, spheres? The whole, the, the, the that and, was... That was cool. That And how humans got into that world. I go, that was cool. That was cool. Like, yeah. if, if you would have ended... if Here's the way... I started this, with that, to be honest with you. <laughs> But whatever that would have been episode one right yeah that so you would have no context to what you just saw and that would be episode one and then it's the world after that Th- to take it almost from the perspective of someone who lives in that world and imagine one day you're just pulling your boat from the docks and all this shit happens and now the world's like this where did like that should have been that, the blood yeah, that's more interesting and i like that but i was like two minutes <laughs> just be honest out of the, out of the four hour show <laughs> That was cool. I like that, but that, it's just that's not obviously not enough to whatever. Once again, and isn't this this is the style of what we talked about doing uh, at a show called Pitch Please, which is you bring us a show and we think of a better version of that show. And and honestly, the better version of the show was the last ten minutes that's of the insane. last episode. Of if that we would have started with like someone narrating and introducing that aspect of it. And then go from there, and then actually give us a, a Witcher origin. That would have been so much more interesting. Oh, you know, oh, but you don't even start off with a narrative. It's it's you the show last. It if you want, but either way, like you show that episode as the first episode, like it starts just like that, okay. and that the end is the like the uh, the the per- here the narrative goes and chapter one, and you realize it's being this is a lesson being told to somebody, and he goes, and then he stops, he goes chapter two, and that's how you start. Like, that's how you do it. So the, the narration is only explained to you in the end. And this is all the reader or the the, mm-hmm. the, the, the listener. You're As a viewer, you are the listener. Taking it in, interpreting the words he's telling you. That's how you do it. Dude, that's the show. That's the show right there. What are you doing? This was, God, how disappointing this was. I was looking forward to this one because I love The Witch. Yeah. I love The Witch, for Christ's sake. You know, we toss a coin all the time to The Witch, for Christ's sake. We really do. We do. Hard stands um, for Henry Cavill Witcher. Like, it's 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 on. It's real. And despite so, that, I'm... I saved this for last. Because you can right. see for me in the, the progression of what I've liked and how it's kind of progressively gone down. Down. So that being said, the last one we're going to mention is Disney Plus is Willow. When I saw the first two episodes, I was, okay, it was all right. And it went down here from there really fast. This show is awful. I, I'm off it now. I finally got off it. Talk about, you mentioned tone before. This show's tone is all over the fucking map, dude. It is. And it's like, what are we trying to do here? I don't think it knows what it wants to do. The music is so off-putting 
on this show. Because it's modern music right. done as it, a cover it just doesn't match. to set a tone yeah, for it, medieval. It's, it's so, yes. oh my God, talk about taking you out of the show. Awful, man. A disappointment. I, I'm officially, I think I did five episodes. I just couldn't do it anymore. I just, it, it's not good. It's not good. Uh, what'd you think about this one? Uh, I liked it more than you. <laughs> I don't think it's awful. I find it charming. Honestly, okay. Because of all the, their inconsistencies, it's almost like watching your kid do a dance recital. You're like, oh, look at him do it! Like, you're really trying it. When I do think, I, 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 like, yay, you're doing it! Like, I there is there's a look at them trying to go that is so earnest and likable. I I is it a great show? No, it's not. And inconsistent, absolutely. But I do find it charming. And I will okay. say. I do like the production value. I feel like it's a world. Like when they're in a castle, it feels like a castle. When they're in the woods, it's in the woods. They just went through this whole water dynamic thing going on. I was like, that's cool. Is some of it very well done CG sets? Absolutely. But it's still that world. There's not an inconsistent, like whatever world they establish, they are victims to that world. The environment reacts to them, they react to their environment kind of stuff. So that I like. Yeah, I mean the, the, the production's fine. I'm not. I'm, there's no argument. Like, like, it, like it doesn't look like shit. Like it's the cheat. No, it's fine. It's good. I, yeah. I, 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 I like that they're trying to be modern while medieval. Like the, it's it. The, they're really trying for it. It's adorable. It's like when someone does like a William Shakespeare play, but with modern language. Like, it's adorable. Like, oh, look at you guys doing this thing. I see you. Look at you. You're really, oh, your parents love you. So it's, <laughs> that's how I feel about Willow. It's like, they're really doing it. Cool. Let's see what you're going to do. Because it's so unlike anything that I I appreciate the bravado of ballsiness to go in. I'm like, we're going to make this work. Are you sure it's going to work? We're going to try. Oh, yeah, you are. You're going to do it. So... I don't know, maybe because I'm a parent, I like seeing someone really try because they think it's going to work. Even if it's failing, at least they're all doing the best version of this. You can make your actor wet when they go into another part of town, Wednesday. They don't have to be <laughs> dry. In Willow, when you're stuck in the mud, the mud is on you until you see them wipe off the mud. You see what I'm saying? It's a consistency. Their world matters. So that's why. Uh, I find Willow charming and not the worst and better, better than Wednesday because they're, they're committed to what they're doing. Yeah, 100%. I definitely disagree with that. I, I don't, the reason I think Witcher is better is because it's shorter. Um, <laughs> I'd have to it's sit, better than Witcher. So I didn't have, Willow is better than Witcher. Easy. I'm sorry? Willow is better than Witcher, in my opinion. Uh, blood orange, I, I, blood orange. Again, blood orange. only because of the length. If it was the same length, I would probably lean more towards Will. But I only have to suffer four episodes <laughs> through which I'm like, okay, fine. It's done, right? We're, it's over. You're having a bad meal, you finish it and go home, right? Widow's meal is still continuing. I don't, I don't want the extra stuff. I don't want the extra dessert or the second main course. I don't want it. Um, but it, yeah, it's it's whatever. I'm, uh, yeah, I'm kind of in. Kind of in. You know. Not the best. It's not the best of the, of the year. It's not oh. the best part of the year. I'll tell you what I actually think was the best adjacent nerd uh, 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 series out there. It just ended season two. Season two came out during the Christmas time. Alice in Borderland. That's really cool. Uh, I like that. Uh, yeah, I like the first season a lot. I yeah. was... Yeah. Okay, uh, you know, let me tell you something. Spoiler alert for Alice in Borderland season one, not season two that just came out. But season one, if you haven't been in it, then like seriously, get on it. It's great. But there is a female character in this series that has one of the greatest backstory tropes I've ever seen. And the way they recontextualized it in this series literally made me cry. Like, I was like, damn you, that's beautiful and stupid all at the same time. I love this trope. I love you, did it to her. God, this is great. Like, it was expertly done. And it, revealing revealed in one of the most climactic moments of the series in season one like just i really if you like squid games and you like insanity watch alice in borderland yeah it's it's a it's a nutty show it's koreans darn those koreans so good yeah. they really know how to make people sad <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but that's actually a pretty good one and all that. So, but yeah, those are some of the ones that, you know, dropped over the last, what, two months, maybe. Um, oh, yeah. I see it in last, last, last month and a month yeah, and a half. I think Will has been up. I think Will was, I don't know. I, I think it's six now. Isn't it six? It's five or six. six. Something like yeah, that. Yeah. Either way. It's still like it's been three years, but it's only been like six weeks. Calm um, down. Hello. Calm down, hello. Right. <laughs> but, but oh, and by sense. the way, since we're just talking about streaming in general, quick honorable mentions, by the way, John Wick 1, 2, and 3 are on HBO Max, and so is Man From U.N.C.L.E. Great action movies. Great sort of, like, Man From U.N.C.L.E. literally was 1960s genre spy stuff, mm-hmm. so it counts that a little bit. Is, is super underrated. Super yeah. underrated. I, I watched it last night for the first time oh, in, really? like, five years. Oh, like five years. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Okay. Yeah. And I was like, oh, man, this is better than I remember. Like, it yeah. gets better it's every it's time. Really, I I'm not watching. I mean, nobody saw it because this thing bombed. But I'm right. saying, I liked it. I enjoyed it. It's pretty good, man. That, yeah, so well good. done. So much fun. fun. G- uh, Guy Ritchie movie. People yeah. forget about it. Yeah. Guy You're Ritchie right. movie. I, this, I wish it had done really good because I, I, this was begging for a sequel. Um, yeah. Oh. Which obviously is not going to happen based on his performance. But, yeah, dude. Right. This, yeah, you're right. This one, you guys, yeah, absolutely. Fun, fun flick. It's like, you know. A very lighthearted, not lighthearted, but lighter James Bond esque kind of, you know. Absolutely. Kind of, kind of Absolutely. Style, so, but it's it's cool. I think it's uh um, oh Henry Cavill. Henry and, Cavill. Um, Army Hammer is the other guy who is. I know. He's, well, he's, Army he's, Hammer's is not going to make I it to the sequel. Pariah, I get that, but <laughs> whatever. Before anything went down, but you know what? It, you know, knowing what you know now about Army Hammer, when he watched that movie, it does add an air of danger to <laughs> yeah, the whole thing. Like, so oh, Henry Cavill, time. watch yourself. Um, so. <laughs> What it was, but yeah, you're right. No, that, that's a really grossly underrated film. Oh, I like that movie. I really wish, God, that, that movie, I wish it got it deserved better. It really did, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. absolutely. I don't know Way why, why didn't do that well, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm surprised. I think it was just one of those, like, really bad times. it wasn't a bad yeah, place. It, it, yeah, it, it bombed it, unfortunately. It just it is what it is. Yeah, it happens, but I don't know, maybe shitty marketing. I don't know. I, I'm trying to remember when it, when it got released and maybe. I, know, yeah, I think summer. it was like something like like 2006 or five, five, something like that. Released a bunch of other movies. It's still, I think, during the summer times, so probably got lost in the shuffle. Oh, yeah, I mean, it got lost in the shuffle. Probably, it was likely. One of those. Yeah, yeah. It, it, like I said, it was a like that movie because that movie was not a hard movie to make. Okay, that movie could have come out anytime and it would have worked. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's a it's a spy thriller. It's what it is, right? You know. And it's a 60s spy thriller. Yeah. That's what makes it great. Yeah. It's that 60s uh, it's like the, America. Like the older James Bond. Vibe more, the, so, right? yeah, yeah. You're, you're talking Sean Connery, right? Yeah, James Bond, exactly. very much that yeah. feel to it, but it, it, almost like the American Russian version of James Bond because they have to work together. So it's a buddy cop of the two James Bonds of their prospective countries working together. It works. It, it plays really well. Well, let me ask you this. I know we want to do. We got like you know, 15 minutes here. We got the, the oh, pitch, please, right? Or you know, like to pitch our ideas and some of them which. Go unnoticed, unfortunately, you know, the DC we're talking about you. What if they were to remake or reboot in Man from Uncle? Ooh. So who, what would be your idea? I mean, and the idea will be the same, right? There's no reason to change the idea of it. The idea was fine, but who, of course, who would be of course. Rise the roles and who would you like to see behind the camera on this one? Who would I see like, who, be, who like, it's gotta be, you, you gotta be, you gotta be physically capable. Like when you look at Army Hammer oh, and you look at oh, the yeah. Cavill, like these oh, guys. Yeah. Guys are, yeah, uh, clearly are there. So, who would I like to see to to make it? Uh, well, you know, I I got to tell you, one way or the other, Ryan Reynolds is going to be in it. I had the same thought. I just don't. Oh, I, actually, you know what? I'm glad you said that. I, I have my pair now. I know we're going to see okay. Deadpool. I get it, but him and Hugh Jackman and something like this could be great as well. That um, oh okay, like Hugh Jackman as 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 a oh yeah that could play really that could well really well right because I mean that was I think with um the the, the two spies was one Russian right I think Army Hammer was a Russian spy right but you know who I you but, know who you I would have picked I, I would go I, I wouldn't go uh, Hugh Jackman I would go uh, Chris Hemsworth because he's so much taller so that sort of like that's that that, that always looking yeah. up, up and down to each yeah. other. And Ryan just always, of course, like think, think of uh, uh, of Chris Hemsworth being Thor dumb, but super spy dangerous, versus Ryan Reynolds being Deadpool smartass while being super spy dangerous. That playoff with each other, 
that could really work because I think I, maybe maybe that's part of the part of the first one. Army Hammer really wasn't a big name back then. Um, he wasn't. And and Henry Cavill, I think that was, I want to say it's pre Superman. I don't know. It was well, oh yeah, it was pre Superman. Was it, Superman? It, it was he. That was his first big studio movie after he was in that War of the Gods movie. Oh right, Oof. not a good movie. Yeah. Okay, so that's probably what it is. I have to look, don't look up now as far as when that got released. But yeah, what about behind, but, behind the uh, camera? What happened? I guess it came out after. I didn't know that. 2015? I thought it was older than that. That's surprising. Then. What? Man from Uncle? Yeah, 2015. Man, oh, Man of Steel was like 2010 or 11. Um, okay, I'm surprised. So either way, but behind the camera, what do you get? Who's directing this? I have a name that just popped up in my head. You know what? It's funny because I forgot Guy Ritchie had directed it. So I, at the first I was like, oh, Guy Ritchie. He's like, wait a minute, he directed the first one. So no. Uh... Uh, oh, you know what? Because of what Guy Ritchie was doing, here, here's another thing that I go so underappreciated about for Man from Uncle. Guy Ritchie did that 60s sort of like panel layout work for 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 screen uh, 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 for montage scenes in the movie. Oh, right, right, right. So you know, it's where the screen is broken like like four or five different squares or three, and they they move it along, and they're different moments all put together. So you're seeing like two movies at the same time with this really clever 60s camera, which kind of looks like comic book paneling, which made me think I would love to see a comic book movie done where there's something like this because that would look really cool yeah. and very stylized. I would like to see that, but it made me think who else would be capable of doing something like that with the type of mood setting that the music did a great job in, in incorporating. And it would be, uh, oh, drawn by the guy who directed uh, Ocean's Eleven. Soderbergh? Soderbergh. That's interesting. It's actually not a bad choice. Not a bad See? choice. I kind of like that. Yeah. I kind of like that. Because yeah. he knows how to keep the, 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 the music and the visual aesthetics going, but heightened. Second place would be Matthew Vaughn. That's, that was my first choice. <laughs> that was like, That's the guy I had in mind. <laughs> that, that's his vibe. A little more serious in tone than like a Kingsman. And as far as yes. Now, a little more grounded in one of my decisions. Yes. Uh, but I think he could, you know, he's tackled that genre. I think he'll do well, particularly with, with yeah, he's, like you said, Hermworth and, and, and this guy will be, gosh, yes, that's, that's, that's not a bad pairing. <laughs> and, so, yeah. dude, and, and, like, you, you bring Soderbergh, if you ever get Soderbergh, you usually know for his dramas and everything, but, like, Ocean's Eleven series is comedy. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's very hip. It's, it's Ocean's quick, quick, 12 quick, yeah. wasn't, yeah. but 11 to 13 were, and it's yeah. comedy. No, I, it works absolutely. really well. Yeah, that, that's not a bad, it's actually a pretty good choice. It's not a bad choice. But that'd be kind of cool. I mean, I, I, I mean, it hasn't been that long. I, I, you, I thought it was new. I thought it came out like two thousand six or seven or something. He knows. Now, I will say this: there is a third agent, a third female agent. That's right. That's right. Who, who, who would you, who would you have cast as her? Oh, let me see. I'm trying to picture her face now. Uh, let me hold on. Let me get the, the cast list here. Who? Alicia Vikander was the other one. Yeah, I didn't know I was her. God, this, I thought it was, it was old. Okay, uh, Elizabeth Debicki was the other, other one. Oh, man. Uh, that's tough, man. Yeah, I know. I'm trying to think. Kind of a spy. A little, a little sexy vibe to it. Yeah, a little sexy vibe to it. Can I tell you who I go, yeah, go for? Ahead, but I think, because I'm trying to think who will fit. Uh, the girl who plays the new Black Widow. Pew? Because I like that she's middle, she, that she that she's Eastern Bloc German. I like that Russian German thing going on, and I want I, I would like to keep that. And she's already been a spy, so it would. But the problem is that she's not a physical spy; she is a a, a psychological spy. Right. Yeah, yeah. So she doesn't have to. So she gets to still be a spy, but it's a completely different skill set for her now. Because she's not going to be the Black Widow; she's going to be the mind fucker. And I like that about it, and that's why I would put her as 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 my go to. God, who would I, man, I'm trying to think who will work. Oh, I got one because it's it's, on, it's it's in the brink because the show's coming out that she has tomorrow. Uh, Alexandra Daddario. She was. Who's she again? She was. Uh, she's doing a show. Uh, the some witches show on AMC tomorrow, which is why you know her mind popped up. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, she was in Big right. Watch, for example. She's done a big thing. She was in the first season of True Detective, the famous scene. Oh, okay, the, yeah. Uh, I, yes, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. She, she's, yeah, yeah. She's got, you know, the physical gifts, if you will. Sure. Um, uh, once again, uh, you know, I, 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 this is where I say what I say. Does she have physical gifts? Absolutely. But she's almost too 
beautiful to be a spy because so much attention to be given well, to her. I seen her like toned down, like in some way she's done where it has been, and she's looked, I guess, regular would be a, a word to say, but whatever, right? You know, didn't have that exuberant beauty and all that. So I seen her in that mode. Um, but I, that one just kind of clipped the mind because she's still she's got that the same that age bracket. She would have been the same age as. as we're close to the ages of these other guys for the most part, right? They're a little bit younger. Like, for example, and I, I mean this in a way of like, Zach Efron is a beautiful man, which is why Zac Efron could never be a spy. Because everyone <laughs> would be constantly looking at him, going, oh my God, that is a beautiful man. But you can get someone like Ryan Reynolds to be a spy. Yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's, he's a beautiful He's guy good too. looking. And so is he's, Chris he's good looking, but. He's the kind of good looking that if you look, if you if you caught you looking at him and he looked back at you, you would automatically look away because like, oh god, he caught me looking. Zach Efron, if you caught looked at him, you were like, that's right, look at you, Zach Efron, deal with it. But <laughs> <laughs> Ryan Reynolds, he, he can, like, he can oh, memorize you with his abs and shit. <laughs> that's exactly. It's too, it's too much. I get credit, look credit away. Too. I that's abs how is ridiculous. I got eighty packing shits, and, it's, it's and that's why Ryan Reynolds could be a spy because as soon as he caught you looking at him, he would look away. He goes, Hi, you don't see me. Hi, you don't see me. Like a ninja, so it works out better. Let's do. See, uh, there's thoughts to why I say. Let, let's these do things. one more. I'll let you come up with uh, the idea. Okay. All right. So here's the idea of how pitch please would work: is we think of an IP that has. Uh, has not been brought to screen yet, or has been but failed and needs a reboot. So, how would we go about that to bring that to, uh, you know, uh, and we would pitch it to the world? And you can think of the, the the context of what the show or the movie would be, and you could assign a director and you could assign a cast as much as you can. But this would be your your perfect pitch. Um, so. Let's start with something that I feel that would be kind of a fun thing to do. Uh, invasion of the Body Snatchers. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's interesting. Let's start OG nerd. Invasion of the Body Snatchers. How would you make it? And who would direct and who would cast? That's interesting. So it has to maintain. I see it's like a Blumhouse I can already see Blumhouse Productions on this. All right. Obviously. Well, not obviously, but I do see that. Oh, man. Well, James Wan will be my first. Oh, that's choice. a good one. Yeah. He does yeah. Yeah. Great and he does big budget. This has to be a little bit more bigger budget than what Blumhouse normally does, I think. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Um, who's, oh, it doesn't matter. I don't care who's in it, to be honest with you. Like, that movie doesn't need, like, named names. It doesn't. But you would, it, you, you'd be smart in my, I mean, you could. in my opinion. If you got one big name that died 20 minutes in. Oh, the old bait and switch? Oh, man. Yeah. Oh, I man. Think if you're, if you're going to do Body Snatcher, how much more would you fuck around the audience and go, you know that one body you thought you could trust? Uh-uh. And you would, like, <laughs> You would do it like either 20 or like 40 minutes into the movie. That's when they would die. Like have it come out of nowhere as a casualty of saying all this is real. Who would be your bait and switch character, lead actor for Invasion of Body Snatchers? It's got to be a big name here. And you would also, you, that actor or actress would also have to do press to make it look like they're in the whole movie. <laughs> you know who I would use, actually to be honest with you, is Ryan Gosling. Ryan, that's a good one. You know, you, that's good. You attract the male and the female audiences I like, and then you bait and switch it. Uh huh. It's this beautiful uh -huh. guy in the movie, not so fast. Yep. That's nope. There you go. I think he, yeah, yeah. He, he'd be one. I, I, I'm trying to think what a modern take. Trying to remember Body Snatch. It's been so long since I've seen that movie. I, you know, we all know the premise of it or whatever it is aliens and sure. the, the pods and all that stuff. Like, I don't want to go like a political route. That's too easy. You know, I, I don't want to see that because I've we've seen stuff like that done before. Or, and I don't want to see right. what do something like the faculty. I don't want to see that either with young kids. I don't want it to be that either. So it's got to be somewhere in the middle. I'm just trying to think what would be a good premise to hang this on. Huh, small town nonsense. I don't want. I'd rather say it's in a big city. You know who actually I thought of as well. Who I want to see in it is uh, oh. Krasinski. Yes, you know, I can see. Yeah, bait and switch. Yeah. Like the actual main character would be something. No, that'll be. Oh, that's a good yeah, one. Right. Yeah. You know I think yeah. that will work really well. Um, or you know what? If you do that, Krasinski has to direct too. 
because he would do that for the rest. Okay. But you have to get rid of Juan. I'm fine with but that. But Juan can produce. Juan can Fair produce. Enough. I am fine with that, actually, because we, we, Quiet Place does have those horror elements to it, and he's proven that's he what can I'm do saying. that and do it well. So, yeah, I uh -huh. agree. Okay, they, just, they, look at that. It's a combo here. I like it. So, yeah, Krasinski starring <laughs> and directing, Brian Gosling, Bait and Switch. Nothing political, but you still want to make it relevant. I'm just trying to... I'm thinking of something like race-related, perhaps, since that seems to be the hot button topic. I think that might be almost too easy. That might be going to the political. I might be on the nose, but... Cause that's, that's, it's kind of a hook to it. It just can't be just random. Just alien. I, I don't want to see something like that, right? And, and I don't want to have kids. I don't want political kids. I really don't want that. I, I don't know what else you can do. Do something small in a smaller scale like Quiet Place was. I guess that could work. Big city-wise. I don't want to see a small town in the middle of fucking farmland, Kansas and shit. I don't want to see that. That's been done to death. That's tough, man. Would you do it as a social commentary? You have which is the way that the, the the way you're switching you is our obsession with phones and technology. I would say more social media, maybe. And I think maybe with so there you go. The hook would be something. It may sound silly, but social media, whatever the aliens is, is going through social media, kind of. Maybe you something know? uh like uh maybe something like uh. Uh, you know how they say when you check social media, you're releasing endorphins, you're going all these kind of stuff. Maybe the, the these parasite can only feed off our endorphins. That could work. Some of that works perfectly. You know, and it, it's, you know, it's so a, a the more that we produce, media. the more they take over, which is why I become more obsessed. And next thing you know, we're, we're slowly not becoming the people we are, all because it is one thing. And it was because you can even say something like a meteor or or so, or even if you want to do it, kind of it gets a little silly because at that point, who cares what the answer is? It's a thing. What Area 51 was, one of the few things we found on it, but we finally cracked it, and that was living inside the container that we cracked. Okay. So it's not even the aliens that we found. It was something aliens had. Nice. And I think that's that, how... And I think that this, the, the stakes... I mean, the, the danger of having social media, where it is now, how it, it spreads, how quickly it could take over the world, that makes it interesting. Right. As Krasinski investigates or oh, whatever. I'm not sure how you need Titan, to be honest with you. I don't know, he's not a cop. Maybe he's just a family guy. It's, it, it's, it's, a, it's a weird thing because you could do a little more social commentary as well. It's like all those people who are like d doomsday preppers and everything, they're the last bastion because they have no access to the internet. Right. But here's what the, oh, what, what the big twist is. Period, it starts with a young kid. You can, I guess you have to TikTok and all this nonsense. And, and that's how it's been to grow, you know? But here's the weird thing is, is that uh, when the body snatch, those who have been body snatched are like chasing down the people before they make it to the woods or the or the or the wasteland or whatever, and they get killed. The guys who are now feel superior to the people who let technology take over their world. Uh, the that sense of superiority, maybe they take it out through violence or through power manipulation, and they get those endorphins of like enjoyment. That the people they killed that virus is now in the air and gets attracted to those endorphins and it starts being like so you already once it's in it's in it doesn't matter if you are someone who feels self-gratification because you're better that's what attracts the parasites influencers things of that nature influencers yeah. of anyone who manipulates her power right. or bullies that's absorb what, absorb 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 it's, absorb it's having like a thing vibe to it the written like the 82 version. a little bit you know a little bit yeah. paranoia who's who uh -huh. you know in Krasinski figuring out what i don't think it's just the right person that kind of vibe could really work and you could even steal the ending you know the end you're wondering is he is he not original Krasinski something like that because i love that about the thing i, I left off like that kind of ambiguity at the end like well it's kurt russell i forgot the other guy's name who was the thing? If either one were, I love. Right. You can do. You can play around with something like that because you have to. Because you gotta set up a sequel. You gotta be a sequel. Come on. Blumhouse. James Wan. Thirty million dollar budget. You're good. If he I'd say. I'd say forty million. So you could make the last 15, 20 minutes of movie bananas. Oh, you wanna go? Oh, look, look, increase the scale. That's fine. Yeah. It's gotta be just at the end. Fair enough. Last 15, 20 minutes of movie where it gets and it's not. Like, you're not going to make, like, a million aliens show up with the case, but, like, whatever your scary monster to fight at the end is, your version of that, it looks great. Like, yeah. that's why, that's where that, that, that extra 10 mil goes. That's fine. Just for that. Yeah, like I said, this is not, this is not an expensive film. It's a movie at all. At all. Like, Blumhouse. They, they make fucking movies with the chains they're finding the couch. Because, you know, that's how they work. I mean, and they make money every single time. Not every time, but 
that's what they do. But yeah, I think that would be in line. But that's a good, that's a good, that's an interesting choice you had there with the body snatchers, a classic, See? a sci-fi classic. Sci-fi classic. Yeah. Listen, just because we're talking about geek stuff, that doesn't mean let's talk about geek stuff that happened a week ago. Oh, we can go as whenever we want. It's amazing. We can do Time Machine if you wanted to. If you want to talk about OG sci-fi, yeah. like that's the beauty of. But come correct you gotta you gotta and you gotta be able to to, to work to you can come in with a full package and we can riff like we did and this was a really fun exercise it's the kind of stuff you know we've all done talking to our friends about like who would you do to do this and just see what that package will come out to and it's, some people and, yeah. come in and it's easier to like when you say well who's you know next superman that's easy you know what I'm saying? yeah you know so that's easy something like that was actually kind of cool I like that because it's i didn't i never even thought about that to be honest with you, you see? Like, it wasn't even in the brain like oh oh shit yeah you're right but that is a in you, and that's a movie that's right for a remake, dude. Yeah, right remake. it's right yeah, there. Absolutely, because it's been it's been a while. That movie was like early '80s, right? At least the second one. Uh, last time was the early '80s. Yeah, like like '83, '84. But yeah, it's almost like the thing remake or remake. But I think yeah, early '80s. So I don't know whatever it was. Like Donald Sutherland I was think the main guy, if I'm not mistaken. Donald, yeah. a, a young yeah, Donald young, Sutherland yeah, with a little, was a little in fro he had, the last you know, remake. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that movie is prime. That's 40 years ago, for Christ's sake. It's prime uh -huh. for a remake. Absolutely. Yeah, you're right. Good call. Good call. I like it. And then it would, it would explain why Kanye said what he's doing. Here. <laughs> the parasite of the first... God is him. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. He's the way he ran Gosling of the bait and switch. <laughs> Actually, we gotta be careful, you know, with the. I, I forgot to mention this, but um, quick side note before we end off that uh, the lawsuit about the trailers. Yes. Oh my God! If you guys haven't heard, so apparently there was a, a couple of guys who rented uh, the movie yesterday. Good movie. Uh, about you know, uh, the guy who a fine movie. Yeah, who wakes up a after fine. some world Good event fine. and he wakes up right. and he learns that the Beatles never existed. So he, you know. Oh, that's not the movie I was thinking yeah. about. Okay, no, that is a good yeah, movie. Okay, yeah, yeah, right. That yeah, is a good yeah. Movie. so he, yes. he, he, you know, takes ownership of the songs. People think he's the, the creator of the, of, of the, instead of the Beatles. Um, but in the trailer, there was a scene um, with Anna de Armas in it. And I guess they were in a talk show when he became famous as being a beat writer of these great songs. And then she's not in the movie at all. But apparently the guys they rented the movie because they're big fans of hers and they wanted to see her in the film. When they find out she wasn't in it, they decide to file a lawsuit against the studio for false advertising or whatever. Sounds ridiculous. And it is ridiculous. But apparently, though, you know, as they're in court now and they're filing the motions and all that. And there was a motion filed by the studio to squash it. This bullshit. It's, it's an art thing, not an not a advertising Court disagrees, say no, it is still an advertising thing. So what you show on there, you should, you know, it's false advertising. So the trial is gonna move, push forward or whatever, which is gonna get settled. But it's giving the fucking five bucks back for Christ's sake, it's nonsense, but whatever. So yeah, now it's time, you know, traders, man, you gotta be careful what you put on there. And we, because it's funny, because we you know, Marvel does this all the time. Everyone, that's everyone said. Oh, Marvel, we gotta watch yeah, out. You know, Marvel's you gotta good. put a disclaimer now. You know, you're not all scenes you know, maybe in the, be in the fair, movie. You know, to be fair, Marvel could go, guys. Ninety percent of what's on the screen isn't real. It's all CG. <laughs> so we get to we decide what you see. <laughs> you bunch of morons. How dare you? God, it's so ridiculous. It's so ridiculous. But yeah, you're gonna see a disclaimer is coming very soon. I'm sure from every studio because these trailers get made for the movies ain't finished for Christ's sake. And a lot of movies, not just Marvel. I know you know a uh, bunch of movies. They just show scenes that aren't you know edited down or cut or oh, whatever. Dude. Do you remember the trailer for the Justice League? How good it made the movie look? Like that is not the movie we saw. Okay, you know, it, it's just I'm you saying. I what wonder if someone uh, the audacity you know of, of suing for that. This movie sucked. This trailer. Look, look at this trailer. Look at awesome. False advertising, maybe. I don't know. Original Suicide Squad. The original how Suicide Squad. True. The great trailer. How yeah. dare you? Man, Pandora's box is about to be open. That's what I'm saying. Dude. I just... <laughs> Shameful, but either way, sorry. You know, I just had, I had to mention that. I thought that was funny. Because wouldn't it be great if, because of this, all movie movie trailers now have to be honest about how good that movie is? So some movie trailers just gonna be the trailer, but the word "sorry." <laughs> sorry. Again, so sorry. I'm gonna put disclaimer: sorry. not only that every scene in the movie, but my put this movie may suck at the bottom at the end, right? <laughs> this movie we did. We, we best warned you, you. Look, it's on there. It's on the screen. It may suck. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> 
would just probably be in any Sony film. Nah, I just kidding. Sony. Oh, easy, easy. Yeah, easy. But to be fair, wouldn't that make more movie tickets? Like, I want to see how bad this movie is. <laughs> it does suck. You know. Like how bad does the movie suck? And people would be like, it wasn't that bad. I'd be like, oh, that movie did suck. Oh, that was the worst movie ever. And they, he would have had right. varying levels. They're, I can't but complain. Even, people would have seen the movie. You can't complain. They, they gave you. They warned you. It's. It, then, then you shouldn't say it sucks. It, it may suck so that way. You know, the wording's gotta be right. If you said it may it could suck. Sorry, <laughs> we apologize preemptively. You decide. You know, you decide. <laughs> does it suck? Uh, let us know. Uh, so. <laughs> Fucking Sony, uh, they'll be out of business. But either way, neither here nor there. Let's end off on that note, Senor. Guys, Eric. that has been the first show of 2023. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like and subscribe here in the Latin Nerd Network. All this shows like Nerd Splating, like the Watch List, like Thanos' Choice are all here available soon to be. Hopefully, also. Pitch, please. Let us know what you think about the segment as well, guys. Uh, if you want to hear all the original audio episodes, you can go to ericdasilva.com, E-R-I-C-D-A-S-I-L-V-A. Don't forget to buy my album, Adorably Offensive, which is their purchase as well. And this is our original audio episodes of all the guests we've had on the show. In 2023, we'll be having many guests on, guys. Looking forward to bringing some uh, old faces and new faces. I think you guys really enjoy the people we got lined up as well. Uh, don't forget to follow us on social media, at NerdsplainingPod on Instagram, at Nerdsplaining underscore on Twitter. I have been Eric De Silva. This has been Jose Romero. We have been nerd explaining. And if you don't know, now you know. Hey. Boom. Happy New Year.